waiting, if I could ask everybody to please silence your cell phones so that we can get ready and not be interrupted as we go through this whole process. And uh, I'll also cover one more question. At the end, we will take questions from the press, so there won't be questions as we go through speaker after speaker. Good afternoon. I'm Clay Davis, the chairman of the Spalding County Board of Commissioners. And on behalf of uh, Griffin and Spalding County, I'd like to welcome you all to this press conference. The agenda for those that are in the room is up on the wall and you should be able to see it. Uh, this is going to be moving along fairly quickly, I believe. Uh, at, so at this time, I'm trying to, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Chief Glenn Polk who is the uh, Spalding County EMA Director. Let me get out of the way. Thank you, Chairman. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Glenn Polk. I'm the Spalding County Emergency Management Director. Just like to start off by um, thank you all for coming, and uh, we'd like to thank all of our local, state, and federal partners and all of those officials for the collaborative effort that we uh, have worked through and starting to begin our recovery efforts in, in order to rebuild our community due to the January 12th severe storms. Spawn County Emergency Management Agency Emergency Operations Center is still activated and we're working to provide necessary resources to those affected. Our hearts and minds are with the other affected communities and I know my fellow EMA directors are working tirelessly for their communities as well. We still have power outages in our community, so we've opened two shelters and we have a regional donated goods center to assist those in need. For citizens that need assistance with cleaning debris around their homes and for people who would like to come in and volunteer with us, we have a call center and that number is 678-453-4508. We're still working in all these areas, so please be patient with us as we continue our disaster cleanup. Thank you. Uh, the city manager, Jessica O'Connor, will bring us up to date on where we are with the city. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. My name is Jessica O'Connor. I'm the city manager with the city of Griffin. I did want to update you on our current outages. As of about five minutes ago, we have 1,458 still without power. At the peak of the outages, we had over 10,000, so we have restored almost 90% of our outages. We also are experiencing some stormwater issues in regards to the drainage in, in our culverts, and so we hope to get those that debris removed as soon as possible. We also have some water wastewater leaks that are occurring right now, so we are fixing those main breaks as we receive them. Additionally, a lot of the public infrastructure to sidewalks and roads has been destroyed, so as we see those, we are trying to make sure that they are safe enough to pass at this time. We also will be working with a debris hauler to remove anything that anybody can put at the right of way and ask that you separate that debris with vegetation and with construction and demolition so that we can dispose of it correctly. Thank you. Chris Stallings, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Stallings. I'm the director of the Georgia Emergency Management and Homeland Security Agency. Since the onset of the incident, our team has been in the field. We've been working in conjunction with our local uh, partners, we've been supporting them and any request uh, that they might have had. We've been out in the field as well as our state operations center has been up and running. Uh, we're still there actively uh, receiving requests for assistance and working with them. We've provided field operations personnel, public information officers, logistics staff, public assistance specialists from our agency, uh, we've also coordinated the response. We're very appreciative of our partnerships with uh, the Department of Public Safety, uh, Department of Natural Resources, Department of Transportation, the Forestry Division, and of course the Georgia State Defense Force that you have deployed here uh, specifically assisting with your communities. Preliminary damage assessments have been completed here in Spalding and, the, and approximately 2,300 homes have been identified as receiving uh, impact or an impact due to the storm and over 100 have been destroyed. We have many other homes just like yours in the, uh, the other six and possibly seven affected uh, counties that we're dealing with. 
In partnership uh, with locals, we got together and were able to send forth a expedited request for a major declaration to FEMA and our partners. And of course, here we've got with us today our regional administrator, Ms. Gracia Check, and then we have the honor of having the deputy administrator, uh, Eric Hooks, here with us today, who is, they did not pause at standing up uh, assistance. So I'd like to publicly thank them for their quick turnaround. And also in a moment, you're going to get to hear from Senator Ossoff. I would like to also publicly thank him. He reached out immediately uh, and was in support of assisting us with that same declaration. So thank you for your support, sir. You as well. We couldn't have done it uh, without you. And because of that, we've been able to do a lot of things. Right now, we're beginning to identify our uh, disaster recovery centers, or you'll hear it maybe called DRCs. And so in the area that is affected that will allow citizens uh, in Spalding and Griffin and all the other affected counties to get that assistance from us and our FEMA partners. And they'll talk to you more about that and we can answer some questions later, but it will be turning on both public assistance and individual assistance. Uh, and those are two major categories uh, that we were uh, highly in need of uh, so that we can get the responses to you. And finally, I'll just say we're dedicated to you. Here at, uh, with GEMA, as well as with our FEMA partners, I won't speak on their behalf, but I think I've got their shoulder of support to say that we will be there uh, until it's done. We're going to stick around. We're not going to leave you in a few days. We're here for the long haul. Uh, and, of course, on behalf of Governor Kemp, who could not be here today, uh, his office is always open. Uh, we are a part of that office, so if there's anything that his office or we can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, sir. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your steadfast leadership, uh, Mr. Director. Your, your swift action, along with our local community emergency management responders, provided the information to the governor so that she could have a quick turnaround on a disaster declaration request. I'm grateful that the president saw fit to sign that request with such immediacy so that we could lean forward into our response and recovery efforts for you here in Georgia. Along with uh, Regional Administrator Check, who joins me here with FEMA, we are also accompanied by John Boyle, who is our federal coordinating officer for this event. John will be here on the ground for the long term, working with state and local leaders uh, throughout this entire uh, response and recovery operation. So I want to thank everyone who's standing here. Incredible leadership in Georgia. Our congressional leadership is strong. Um, both professionally and personally. I know the commitment of Senator Ossoff and the rest of the congressional delegation uh, to drive the recovery for Georgia forward. And I think I speak for everyone standing here uh, that our hearts break for any loss of life. And I understand that there was a loss of life of a five-year-old child uh, over in Butts County. And so I do not want to um, go without recognizing that loss. I'm also here today to confirm that we are working hand in hand to ensure that everyone that's impacted by this disaster can access the resources they need to turn the page from the disaster to restoring some sense of normalcy and leading to their recovery. Just yesterday, I was on the ground in Dallas County and Ottawa County over in Alabama. And just like here, we have surveyed damage and will continue to survey damage. But beyond the tragedy of the damage out there, what I have seen in Alabama and what I've seen this morning over in Troop County, and we'll certainly see over here in Spalding County as well, is the resilience of a people. I've been seeing neighbor helping neighbor, people coming to each other's aid to provide information. And I also want to make sure that we continue in this spirit and listen to your local trusted voices. Many of them stand here. And I like to thank the media for also amplifying those local and trusted voices so people can access the need, the, the, uh, the recovery relief that they need. I also want to encourage anyone who has been impacted by this storm, particularly if you're uninsured, but oftentimes people are underinsured. And so if you're not sure and you've been impacted by this storm, we want you to register with FEMA as soon as possible. You can do that in a number of ways. We have the FEMA app that you can download to your mobile device. There's also uh, a website that you can go on. 
disasterassistance.gov. That's disasterassistance.gov, where you can sign up and avail yourself to the relief programs that FEMA is bringing to bear. We also have a traditional 1-800 number. It's 1-800-621-3362. That's 1-800-621-3362. And that number is available to call from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Central Time and Eastern Standard Time to 11 p.m. at night. So we look forward to our, to our continued work uh, with all of you as we will continue to work in this great state as well as Alabama to get the disaster relief that's needed to anyone who's been impacted with this storm. So thank you for allowing me to be here with you today, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. At this time, it's my privilege to introduce uh, Senator Ostoff to come forward. Sure. Thank you. Thank you appreciate Chairman. it, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Uh, I want to express my gratitude to Deputy Administrator Hooks and Regional Administrator Gracia Check for their presence here today, as well as to uh, GEMA Director Chris Stallings for his leadership uh, in these difficult recent days here in Griffin and Spalding County uh, and across the region. Uh, I want to take a moment on behalf of the entire state uh, and express uh, our deep regret and sorrow at the loss of life that has resulted from these devastating storms, including a five-year-old boy who was killed in Butts County, uh, a heroic Georgia Department of Transportation state employee killed in the line of duty, as well as a Georgia right-of-way lineman uh, who was killed uh, in responding to this severe weather. On behalf of the entire state, our hearts are with the families of those killed, as well as with all who sustained injuries uh, and property damage or loss of their homes during these devastating storms. Uh, I reached out directly to uh, GEMA Director Stallings uh, after the touchdown of these tornadoes, uh, and my office coordinated closely with FEMA leadership as well as the White House in order to expedite a presidential declaration of a major disaster. Uh, to open the door to the federal assistance uh, that is necessary to ensure a swift recovery uh, and rebuilding as well as the immediate support for those families impacted who need emergency shelter uh, and the localities who need federal assistance in responding to these storms. I'm grateful to the President for swiftly issuing that major disaster declaration. My team and I are here to assist all Georgians as we work together as one state and one community to rebuild uh, all of the resources available through uh, FEMA and other federal agencies can be found at ossoff.senate.gov uh, and as the deputy administrator mentioned disasterassistance.gov thank you all so much thank you senator appreciate it at this time if the press has any specific questions we'll see uh, how to answer them We did just receive word that the schools will remain closed tomorrow. That information has gone out to the, the students and families of the school. Do we know when it will open? I don't know that, just that they are closed tomorrow. We do also know, though, that power has been restored to all schools as well as the bus yard for transportation. So that was one of the last things that was holding them up, but that power has been restored. I'm not in the school system, so I can't speak for them. I just was notified of that information a few minutes ago, though. Any further questions from the press? Is there any list of needs at any of the uh, shelters to workers, uh, particularly maybe food, water, whatever? Glenn. Thank you for that question. Uh, we have a dedicated group of volunteers from very many facets for our community, and uh, we have a call center that's coordinating needs of uh, uh, people in our community and or people that can give that assistance, and that number is 678-453-4508. We have a call center set up at the Senior Center down on Memorial Drive.
school will get their um, financial assistance. How does that generally work for the average person? If you'll allow me, I'm going to call our uh, federal coordinating officer to the stand. John. I'm John Boyle, uh, federal coordinating officer. And to specifically answer the question, it's, it's a fairly quick turnaround within the time of registration. So as soon as they register, they're going to begin hearing back from us very quickly about what their, their status is. And you know, to get much more specific than that, it's really difficult to do because every case is a little different. Yes, we will have a disaster recovery center opened up here shortly, and we'll also have uh, disaster services uh, assistance employees out in the field going door to door and working with disaster affected community people. Please make sure you, as, as citizens, ask to see their badge. Be safe on that and make sure you know who you're talking to when they come. Thank you. I think the city manager mentioned get the debris up to the the edge of the roadway and that'll uh, facilitate the pickup. We'll, we'll work with the community on the reimbursement for debris removal as a part of our, our public assistance program. So that's all, all part of what we do. Locally, we have enacted a few other um, rules that we're hoping will help with those kind of questions so that we don't have any kind of issues there. Our contractor that we are using is actually going to have an orange placard in their truck on the passenger side, so closest to the right of way. So you will know if that person coming by works for the city, we have hired them. There also is registration for local contractors that may be helping on private property. We're asking that they register with our planning and development department. They can do that online at cityofgriffin.com or they can call planning and development at 770-233-4130. They will have a yellow placard in their car that shows that they have been registered to be able to, to help in this storm. Representative Mapiak. Uh, absolutely and you know very frankly you know FEMA programs public assistance is focused on infrastructure and some private prop, uh, nonprofit organizations individual assistance for individuals and homeowners businesses we have the small business administration out and about with us and what we'll do is we'll come back to the city and, and provide additional information about that I'm also looking to bring in the U.S. Department of Economic Development Administration and USDA as partners in this disaster so that we can come together with your community, your businesses, get to know what their issues and challenges are, and see what kind of resources we can bring to bear to help move them forward toward recovery. That's kind of, I know, a very generic answer for now. But you know, we, we need to get a better understanding of what the impacts were, and that becomes part of the recovery initiative. Thank you. That, that helps. Thank you. Um, I, I hope I can do as much as possible. Any other press questions? Uh, at this time, I'd like to say thank you to the press for what you're doing to get the word out to our citizens. It is extremely important, and I'd like to thank the folks that are coming here to provide resources that are so badly needed. When you drive around and have an opportunity to look at it, you go, wow, this is so bad, and we appreciate the, all the stuff that you're doing to be able to bring it into us. At this time, uh, that concludes the uh, press conference, and we'd like to once again thank you all for coming. Thank you so much. Really powerful. I'm glad to be here.
I feel that way. And there's staff that come do it. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna I said, get I need apple something, and they said, here, here. here. So here's your gap right now. I heard about it. It's more than that. It is. I didn't. I was working here 14 hours a day before this happened. What's the hour? Thank you, man. Thank you.